Hey, I'm Sam and I do design and in the video today, I'm going to be showing you how to set up this coffee cup in Keyshot. In this tutorial, I'm just going to be focusing on the coffee cup and if we scroll out of the scene that I've got set up here, you can see that actually it's a really simple setup. It's just essentially one plane with some extra props on it as well. So what I'm actually going to do is go to the library tab that I've got over here open up the models and I've got a coffee cup saved over here. You can go and find uh, a coffee cup that you like online. I think I downloaded this from GrabCAD or potentially Turbo Squid, but with the coffee cup in the scene, there we go, uh, I can start to position it. So I'm just gonna snap that to ground. And I think I want to move it to about here. That's where I had the thumbnail. Okay, so essentially we have our empty cup with no coffee in it. And I know for a fact that there are thousands of ways you can do things in Keyshot. Um, and I always tend to go for the most simplest way. So all I'm going to do is go to add, add geometry and disc. And that's going to import a disc into the scene. And it is huge at the moment, which is fine because we can just scale it down over here. I think if I put in something like a hundred, that's going to be a little bit more usable and what i'm going to do now is uh literally just place it into the cup into the mug where the coffee might go there we go and what i really want to make sure is happening is that it goes right the way and intersects the cup that's in there as well okay so now what we can do is double click on that go into the material graph and we're going to add in a texture. And this is one of those things that I hope uh, it just becomes so clear to everybody uh, that it's just as simple as this. Whereas what I've done is I've gone onto the website Unsplash and Unsplash has thousands and, and millions of free photos that you can use, uh, royalty free, and they're all super high resolution. And all I've done is I've found a picture of a coffee cup. Uh, a few criteria I needed while I was looking for that and that was it needed to be completely top down and have uh, some nice textures in there um, but without any major shadows going on. So what I can do is uh, just line this up with the disk and already uh, essentially that's done the whole job for us. Slightly too big so I'm just gonna make sure that I can get the um, coffee to be lined up with the cup. And what I'm looking for is for the white section of the coffee cup, which you can see here, to line up perfectly with the white section of our cup, because that's going to do most of the work for us. I can also go in and change this to a plastic material and add a little bit of roughness. But what I want to do is bring down most of the specular, which is how shiny it is, because it's already baked into the texture itself, if that makes sense. As an extra little step we can do with this as well is uh, we can grab this and put it into the bump node and just double tap on that and make sure that our bump is pretty low. And I think I want to make that the opposite way. So the bump is the opposite. Okay, something like that. And what that's going to do is just take the data that's in this uh, image and just apply some highlights and shadows into the different areas there and just try and blend it into the scene a little bit. Okay. That's essentially the whole thing. Um, I've got a couple more tricks up my sleeve for this tutorial. What I want to do is go to this disc and actually rotate it so that we can match the lights that I've got in this scene. So in this scene, you can see that I've got light coming in from the right hand side. That means that the shadow is being cast on the left hand side of the cup. And what we can do is line up all of these highlights to try and match our scene as well. So what I'm gonna actually look for is these bubbles. And you can see that there's a bright highlight on one side of the bubbles. And we want to try and match that with exactly where our scene is so that the bubbles line up with our current um, 
lighting and that also means that we get a nice highlight over here as well. So that's going to be pretty much it. I think that's all lined up. And now what I'm going to show you is how I made the steam uh, coming off the coffee cup from the original image. Now, again, there are so many ways you can do this in Keyshot. You can load in a cube or, or piece of geometry and uh, add in a file that simulates volumetric steam. Uh, and Keyshot is going to try and figure out how the light interacts with that. But what I'm going to try and do is just do it really, really fast so that it actually uh, renders a lot quicker as well. So I'm going to add some more geometry. It's going to be a cylinder this time. And again, it's imported absolutely huge. So maybe let's just... So what I'm going to do with this cylinder is line it up over the coffee cup. And we're going to line it up so that it perfectly sits within the walls of the coffee cup and into the coffee itself. And now what we're going to do is just make sure that the top of that cylinder actually goes off the screen like this because we're going to house our steam into this material. Okay, so now I can double click on that and open up the material graph. Just rearrange some stuff so we can see it. And I'm going to go back into our textures and I've already downloaded exactly what we want again from the internet. And it's just a picture of some steam. Just It doesn't have to be a PNG. It doesn't have to be transparent. Uh, it's just a picture of some steam. I can put that into the opacity. And already, uh, we're starting to get some uh, remnants of steam here. Now, it's not perfect. I need to go in and change some things. So what I'm going to do is come over to uh, plastic. I think cloudy worked best when I tried this earlier on. I'm going to make that completely white. Now I can come over here and press C on the keyboard so I just see the exact thing that I'm trying to focus on. Untick all of these because I only want it to be repeated once and I can come up here, map it to cylinder because that's exactly what it's wrapping around. And essentially just use these tools to start to position the steam and where you want it to go. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up with the front of the camera there. And this is when I can start to go in and change exactly where I need it. That might need to be 35. Okay, so we want it to just start to wrap around the cylinder, but not go over the edge. You know, it doesn't, it, it can't go around the edge. But essentially, that should be pretty much it. And as that starts to res up, uh, what we should now see is that the steam is... It looks as if it's over the coffee and over the, the mug and starts to go over the table and the wood as well. But we're saving time by not using that volumetric um, transparent material that you can use in Keyshot. Now, there are plenty of tutorials if you want to do it. The most physically accurate way of you know having in this 3D geometry in there as steam. Uh, I know that Liam Martin has some great tutorials on that as well. But this was just something that I learned recently at work as uh, we wanted to get some renders out really quickly. And this was a great way of doing that. You can, of course, go in and change the materials. And, you know, if you don't want it to be cloudy, um, let's try some different materials. And I think actually my favorite look from all of these is the plastic transparent. I've got the roughness as one and the refractive index as one as well. So that essentially means that the refractive index is mimicking what air is. That is exactly one. And also the roughness of one because we don't want any reflections or anything in the steam itself because steam isn't reflective. So essentially, that's the whole scene. Um, all I've done in terms of the camera is make sure I've got some um, depth of field on there that's going to really help sell it as a photograph. I've gone in and changed the um, settings to be the photographic style along with some curves and uh, denoise and things like that. Again, plenty of other tutorials on that. I just wanted to focus on the coffee cup. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I would love to see all of the coffee cups that you decide to make on Instagram. So don't forget to tag me on that and I can start sharing them. 
Don't forget if you learned something in this video to comment down below because I love hearing about it. And also like and comment and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.